us. Do you think that we're all running around a lot quicker than we used to? Oh, yeah. Which we're all talking about being stressed, but is, yeah. is this, why is this? Well, Anthony Eslin calls it the abolition of childhood. Uh, George Medved says the same thing. Uh, childhood is when you're supposed to play and waste time. Yes. Nobody's allowed to waste time anymore. Mm. Uh, one of our neighbors was worried about, my, my wife also uh, often uh, gets people into uh, private schools or, or colleges, and uh, uh, his kid was going into kindergarten. Yeah. And he was worried that his kid would never get into Harvard because he wasn't getting into a prestigious kindergarten. Oh. So she had to somehow write a letter saying, this kid is bright enough to get into your special kindergarten. Now, that's crazy. See, I don't think, that's I'm crazy. not for physical harm usually, but people like that should be slapped. <laughs> it's stupid. I, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that we, are, we regulate very, have very little TV uh, they're homeschooled, so they're usually wonderful. Usually, yeah, hitting each other with sticks. And yeah. my son today found a rat that the cat killed, and he's running around and yep. it's just lovely and yep. just being human. Chesterton has an essay on, on on sticks being the primary toy. You can you can use Sex. it for anything. No sticks. <laughs> okay, good. Glad we clarified. <laughs> a yes. stick being the primary toy. Yeah. You know, it can be a sword. It can be a, a, an oar. It can be the beginning of a house. It can be a. a Anything. Now, we've talked about boredom in the negative sense, but part of why I want my children not to have phones, not to be playing games, you know, I mean, with some, with some exceptions, is that I want them to be bored. But maybe I don't mean bored in the negative sense. I mean... Stimulated to do something original and creative themselves instead of disappearing into their screens. Yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, I observe kids today <sighs> addicted to their their phones. One of the assignments I give to my students is you want to do an extra credit essay uh, right on how my world changed when I resolved not to look at any screen for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten about a dozen essays back and about half of them say the same thing. I couldn't do it. I thought I could. Uh, I cannot live without my, my iPhone. That's addiction. I uh, did this last year. I'm doing it again this year. I give up the internet for a month. So all of August. Starting at why not a year? Because I wouldn't have a job anymore and my children uh, wouldn't yes. have food. Or is that a lie? Maybe that's a... Yeah, the spider web is encompassing us. It's encompassing us. I mean, this is it. I mean, this is... I consider this to be good work that's going to go out to all these people, but this, of course, is Eventually, based on the internet. Eventually, we will evolve into the matrix. Yeah. But I find it bloody hard. Like, I used to drop off my phone. I'd put my phone and my laptop, which were the only kind of devices I had, into a bag, and I would take it to a friend's house Friday night and say, I'll pick it up Monday. If I come earlier, make fun of me and don't let me have it. And as I would back out, I would reach for my phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this can't be good. Well, if there's anything that you can't live with that is less than yourself, that's your master. If You're there's anything you can't live with, yeah. Got to have it. Well, yeah. that's not your, your, well, your servant. That's your yeah, master. Yeah, coffee's my master. I can do without coffee. Can you? Is there anything you can't do without that you're working on breaking right now? I don't think so. That's I guess cool. there is. I guess God will show it to me, whatever it is, but no. Um, are you afraid of death? No. I'm afraid of dying. I'm a coward. I don't like pain. I'm a coward too. So the death bit's okay. You die in your sleep or something. You no, could I'm die not, anyway. I'm not, I'm, I know. As a Christian, I know I'm not going to go to heaven because I'm good enough. I'm going to go to heaven because God loves me. Period. Mm. End of story. Mm. So simple. it's not the death. It's the it's the pain that might be yeah. Yeah, brought on with this. If you could die in any way, I guess the answer is however God wills it. But if you got to choose. Well, there are special privileges for martyrs. Oh, my gosh. You know, a, chop, a chop of the head is very merciful, very quick. Yeah. Yeah. My it's... favorite movie of all time is A Man for All Seasons, St. Thomas More. Oh, I love A Man for Isn't All that Seasons. Great of a movie? I think that's probably, yeah, one of my that top death, three that favorite death scene movies. That is very beautiful, too. The remind, jokes he cracked at that. Remind me. Block. Remind me, I forget. Um, oh, he said something to the, to the man about to chop his head off, didn't he? Yeah, please spare my beard. It, it, it at least has not committed treason against a good king. That's amazing. It's amazing because um, I remember being more stirred by that movie on a low budget than I did with Braveheart, although I love Braveheart yeah. too. Yeah. Why are most saint movies crap? Ooh, that's a good question. They certainly are. Yeah. Embarrassingly yeah. bad. Embarrassingly bad. Uh, I don't know. 
that's clearer, I think, for Protestants than for Catholics, because Protestants write Jesus novels, and they're all horribly oh, bad, really? embarrassingly bad, amazingly bad. I haven't seen any of these Jesus novels. Yeah. Like fiction or? Fictional, fictional Jesus novels. Okay. They're terrible. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that you can't write Jesus fiction proves that he's different than anybody else. You can write fiction about Alexander the Great or yeah. Julius Caesar or Stalin, anybody. Yeah. You cannot write fiction about Jesus. Dostoevsky came closest to it in The Grand Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say a word. Love he it. doesn't do a deed except one. Kissed him. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so... I don't know why. Is it because piety? We don't understand that... I don't know, a lot of these movies with saints, they look effeminate. <sighs> yeah, as they if do. Pi they piety do. meant to they act do. like that. They do. I think part of the answer is we are so into pop psychology and feelings and so into niceness that we think to be a saint is to have nice feelings. So let's portray them yeah. as, as nice and as comfortable and as smiling all the time and yeah. as not honest enough to deal with this yeah, yeah, yeah. crap. Yeah. Well, and then Mother Teresa, what she had to say about the spiritual life that came out after she died shows. Yeah. That it's Talk about tough. Bloody hard. Did she you ever would. meet Mother Teresa? I did. did I you? did. Tell us she about came, it. She came to our local parish. Yeah. And uh, there was a line outside the church afterwards, about 100 people long, mm -hmm. uh, to simply say hello and shake her hands. And it took about two hours because she spent some time with everybody. Wow. And I got up to her and shook her hand. And she simply said, hello, uh, God loves you, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it took 10 seconds, but it was like there was nobody else in the universe. It was just me and her. And there was no time. I know exactly didn't matter, what you mean. didn't matter whether it was one second or ten hours. That was the only what thing that it, happened. What is that? Because I experienced that with a bloke called Father Bob Bedard, who founded the Companions of the Cross up in Canada. Mm -hmm. Very holy man. Mm -hmm. Kind of messy, unkempt, madly in love with Jesus. I remember the same thing happening. He came up and he shook my hand and everything melted away. Yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? Total attention. And I heard that about people would say that about John Paul too. The opposite of ADD. Total yeah. attention. All of you is there, your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole will. It, he looks at you as God does. God doesn't say, well, all right, I'll give you one-tenth of my attention because I have all these other people. No, I give you all of it. Yeah. Is that something you actually purposely try to do? Because you must meet a lot of people who are thrilled to meet you. I'm thrilled to meet you. No, I am shy and I get easily embarrassed, so I back away. Yeah. I get easily embarrassed. I feel very awkward around people. I can speak to 10,000 people too. and I'll do a great job and it'll be fine. But if I meet people one-on-one -on -one afterwards, I'm aware of how I look as they're looking at me and I'm afraid I sound silly. And I just, I don't know what that is. I gotta work yeah. on it. This is why I don't like to read my own books and I don't like to listen to my own podcasts because I, 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 I sound wrong. Mm. I used to live in Ireland and I binged Peter Kraft for several months listen to oh is that is that the embarrassment bit there yeah, yeah i'm sorry but you, then what do you, you do you could have you could have chosen augustine or aquinas or somebody <laughs> worth binging on for goodness well sakes. i think i eventually binged on them because you talked about them in a way that actually okay. made it interesting okay then then my existence is justified good but then how do you respond to people who come up to you just like you met mother Teresa, and i'm sure you were wanting to meet her uh, excited to meet her it's probably humbling to recognize that people see you and they have that same kind of experience. No. no. No, I don't mean when they meet you, but I mean they at least want to meet you, like you may have wanted to meet Mother yeah, Teresa. Yeah, yeah. So how do you, how do you, how do you sort of uh, validate that? I'm an absent-minded professor who is congenitally <laughs> unaware <laughs> of other people and their deepest needs. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll so, do. So I, I live on the surface. Yeah. If they ask me a question, I answer it. Did you ever feel a temptation to not be embarrassed and not be awkward and go, okay, I've got to be better and then eventually you just went, oh, screw it, this is me, deal with it? Or have you always been just, this is me? Uh, sometimes, sometimes you know that there is a, a sudden transition. I remember once I was going to a very important something or other, I don't know what it was, speaking engagement or a meeting, uh, and I had a new suit on, mm -hmm. uh, and it started to rain, and I lost my way, and it was getting dark. Uh, and then the tire blew, and I still had a half hour, so I tried to change the tire, mm -hmm. and I was by, by this road cursing, yes, and good. an 18-wheeler came by and totally splashed my new suit. Oh. At that point, I broke out into uproarious laughter. Did you really? It was healing, <laughs> yes. Wow. That was a divine gift. That was the suffering you needed, hey? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
because I'm always aware of that. Like on a much smaller level, people will come up to me and thank me for a book that I've written. Of course, I've only written like mm. two. Uh, but, you know, and I'm tempted to dismiss it, but then I realize it's important to them that I hear yeah. it, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I, I try, but I'm not very good. I mean, psychologically, I am the last kind of person that ought to be a parish priest. Yeah. Uh, holding old ladies' hands and comforting them. That's not my thing. No, I, I don't have time for this, okay? If you tell me what you need, I'll do it. But I, do you know, it's do you, a guy thing, I think. This yeah. is why God invented women to yeah, teach us. Thank God. Thank God for women. Do you know I met you at a Legatus conference in Florida a couple of years ago? Oh. I had the unfortunate, uh, I had to speak after you, which no one would want to do. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, you gave a talk, and then I gave a talk. And then I met you, and I said, hey, how you doing? I think they want us to do some panel discussion. And you went, oh, I was going to go surfing, which I thought was excellent. Oh, and you know, I think you said, do they know I know that? I'm not sure. Okay, well, maybe let me, I'm just going to go. Anyway, I don't know if you remember that. I'm an escapist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that too. I like being alone. Here's how I knew I was introverted. If I go to a party, I love going to the bathroom. And I love going into a bathroom and shutting the door and locking it. And I just feel this instant relief for two reasons. Relief because mm -hmm. I let things go too. But um, I especially like it if there's two types of locks. The one that slides over and the button that gives the satisfying click. <laughs> now, if there is no satisfying click, I'm on, ang I'm on edge in the bathroom, thinking at any point someone can burst in. And my I hate parties too. I don't usually go to the bathroom. But uh, if you can seek out one other person who yeah. you can have a deep conversation with yeah. at a party, yeah. and if the party hostess isn't one of these intrusive people who breaks up such conversations, yes. come on, this is a party, yes. you feel like strangling them at that I know. point. Uh, then then a party's worthwhile. When you I go to people. a party, I find a spot, get a drink, get my pipe or cigar, and I sit, and I just don't move and hope that someone interesting sits next to me. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to circulate. Mingle. Hi, Mingle, hi. circulate. Yeah. Now, my wife, on the other hand, is very extroverted. She's afraid if she leaves a party, they all stop having fun. My wife is exactly the is same. I think really? all women are like that. They, they, they are experts in relationships. We're not. Mm. That's true. Yo, thanks for watching. You can watch the entire episode on YouTube if you want. You can listen to it at The Matt Frad Show by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And feel free to support me, patreon.com slash mattfrad.